there are a lot of conflicts happening around the globe. History itself is evidence enough that through time, conflicts have shaped societies, beliefs, and culture. But how has this impacted the minds of the people involved? Are we sure we know the full story of history? Or are we hiding evidences of the past in plain sight? Ava DuVernay's documentary film 13 talks about the injustice faced by the African-American community during the early ages of being free from their past. But are they really freed by history? Let's find out and stand your point. As students, what did the film speak about peace and nonviolence? In terms of film's economy, the 13th Amendment embodies except for criminals and has exploited the existence of state labor. In an economic system that became increasingly evident after the U.S. Civil War and Reconstruction period, slavery provided a significant portion of the capital, iron, and manufactured commodities that enabled America's economy to rebuild and sustain the war, especially in resource instruction and industry where the use of cheap Due to the mass incarceration, the U.S. economy was in crisis during President Reagan's modern war on drugs in the 1970s. He also proposed the Economic Tax Recovery Act, which would cut taxes for rich people while imprisoning all tax users. As a result, there has been economic stagnation and economic and policy change. for the substantial development of the prison system were provided by the Federal Crime Bill of 1994. The American Legislative Executive Council, or ALEC, rise to dominance in the business world as evidenced by the exploitation of prison labor. Walmart is alleged to be one of the firms that benefited from ALEC's Stand Your Ground Laws policy, which was in the case of J. Watt Martin, where it is said that people allow the law to use deadly weapons to defend themselves. Walmart benefited from Alex's policy since it makes a lot of money from being the country's largest seller of firearms. Capitalism began to take shape as a result of this expanding business. Private companies make money from Alex's abusive initiatives that includes here the CCA or Private Prison Corporation from Alex advocating for policies that increase the number of people in its prison. They also have detention facilities and immigrant prisons which benefited the CCA directly. As illustrated in the documentary film, with the advent of mass incarceration, the prison industrial complex and the expansion of American business why political leaders and business needed black people to make a profit and contribute to the economy. As this was an act of slavery, prison labor have corporations that are now involved in this free labor for the manufacture of their goods. Throughout the country's long history of racial injustice, black and Latino Americans have been less likely than whites at similar social economic levels to see their earnings recover. Implying in the incarceration keeps them in low wage jobs and continues a still continues a cycle of poverty and color discrimination at the same time in the economy. In the film, my stand is that the United States and even other countries should not try to overcome racism only for the sake of economy and prosperity. The concept of categorizing black people as criminals because they all did something wrong or right is unjust, since it simply forces them to become slaves and work as free labor in prison for the profit of corporate leaders. As individuals, everything matters, and we should treat them equally, giving them a chance and supporting their independence in all circumstances. 
The world, on the other hand, should understand that support for human rights and racial justice is not a passive assertion of principles. It should be a call to action accompanied by concrete steps to recognize, understand, measure, and remove institutional racism. The world is at a decision point and it is up to our policy makers to navigate the situation. Racism will continue to destroy our economy and all of us if we do nothing. On our analyzation, the movie portrays an in-depth examination of the United States prison system and how it rebuilds the country's history of racial inequality. The United States is notable for its extreme level of mass incarceration, surpassing any other nation on the planet. Through the 20th century in the United States, prisons were formed according to the times that the population of the state and federal prisons saw a gradual increase according to the Sentencing Project on Criminal Justice. As one of the result, religion had become a subject to prejudice as social stereotypes played into a direct association with certain crimes. In connection with the movie in terms of religion is that religious communities provide a vital network to support prisoners and can play an important role in easing a prisoner's transition back into the community upon release. Religious persons and religious institutions have greatly influenced the treatment of criminals. In many cases, inmates gain direction and meaning for their life from the practice of religion while in prison. Having this peace of mind helps inmates improve their well-being, especially those serving long sentences. A very important reason why inmates become involved with religion is to improve their own self-concept because the core of many religious beliefs includes acceptance, love from the higher being, and from the members of the faith group. So inmates can feel better about themselves if they practice religion while incarcerated. As a student, it is important to be educated on the matters in the film because it is a powerful tool that brings important topics to the table in a captivating way that also sparks conversations and can even make social movements. Knowing that the film is about racism, we need to learn how to be actively anti-racist and fight for our own rights to create a fair and a peaceful environment. On the other hand, the movie is incredibly an eye-opening film. The documentary helped me understand why certain issues got to the way they are right now. I can better understand how many African American men ended up as jail statistics and how the stereotype came into existence. On the educational aspect of the film, the mindset that consumed and manifested the minds of the American society before was a void of anger and greed. Um, fetish crimes of brutes, the revolution that led to the right to vote, the racial superbombs, all this started with the thought of the people of color that they were human too, that they had a right that was not recognized by the part of society that was condemning them. One of the major points that I've seen in the documentary by Ava Duvernay was another film that was released in 1915. The, fil the title of the film was The Birth of a Nation, which led to the rebirth of the Ku Klux Klan. Because of the rebirth of the Ku Klux Klan or the KKK, white communities were educated to the thought that terrorism towards um, African Americans was okay. Uh, until some people of power or position came to the idea that it was, it was too much because of the doings of the KKK. Transitioning the community, uh, the transitioning of communities to the policy of cultural segregation was brought or brought into place to stop the violence that was occurring towards the black community. Um, to further elaborate, racism and discrimination 
was further elaborated as the separation of communities labeled the black people as a lower race compared to the white folks. To lessen the tension, um, integration in schools and certain institutions was brought into the picture wherein people of color would blend with the white folks. This even made it worse as violence made, um, but made by the people outbursts due to the discrimination that was growing and growing by day. Media at the time were exposing the violations created by well, the violations created in the policy of integration and the law of um, segregation. It's exposed. It was exposed that the racial super bombs were in white folks and people of color would have riots in certain public places. In the presidency of Richard Nixon, um, the war on drugs was ongoing where the discrimination took place um, on the part of the black community and the Latin community. Um, the lack of education on teaching the public about the prevention of using certain illegal drugs and certain harmful drugs was the misconcept or misconception done by the government. They focused on the violence and physical action rather on the education that was better uh, method on combating the war on drugs conflict. Minors that were involved in the gang activities were getting arrested and being called by the media and people as super predators. With this in mind, it installed mentally on the society that young black people were dangerous, wild, and untamed. In the film, um, Malkia Cyril 2016 quoted that, So you have educated a public deliberately over years and decades to believe that black men in particular and black people in general are criminals. This created fear not only in the minds of the white folks but also in the minds itself of the black people too. Being educated about these um, happenings from what I've watched in the film opened a lot of information that widened my perspective. I think my stand on the film that I've watched is why it took decades of suffering to reach the end the people of color wished for a long time. Um, I mean, there yes, there are superior cultures and societies before, but to reach the extent of such violence is just so wrong for me. This created decades of fear for a lot of people, which affected history itself. It is just wrong to explain in a class of minors that once in history, um, dark colored skinned people was abused in labor, in rights, in their own homes, and in the mindset that they have no choice but to follow others with fear. Reflecting on the lessons and reminders shown in the film, it simply, it simply states that History is an experience and a reminder that it should be not repeated otherwise. Let us be educated more on the things that really matter like peaceful and non-violent actions towards conflict we face in this present time. Racial discrimination, particularly colorism, has existed since the beginning of time as a result of injustice. In fact, slavery existed in which black people Particularly men were described as criminals or a menace to women. It came to an end in December 1865. However, the contemporary war on drugs was proclaimed at the start of 1980, and the mid to late 1980s saw the rise of crack cocaine. Black individuals, black men, were all over the news. Some were in handcuffs, some were found dead, and some were incarcerated. It is no longer a war on drugs. Instead, it is a war on black communities. Because almost all of the families were black and the media focused on them. That generation was called super predators. And the government enacted legislation called three strikes and you're out. Which basically implies that if you commit three crimes, you'll be permanently in prison. Consider how many children will grow up with their parents, how many mothers will suffer as single parents, and how many families will be destroyed as a result of this tragedy. 
Until recently, this phenomenon, in my opinion, was a major concern in our society, especially inside the family. According to studies, males cope with stress by fight or fighting, while females respond by tend and befriending. Furthermore, the family has two distinct coping techniques or coping mechanisms. They prefer to withdraw their emotions from their families when the father is under more stress at work. As a result, their family became more complicated throughout those times. Of course, the children will bear the brunt of the consequences. That is why the majority of black children came from broken, broken families. Going back to the question, in this film, I saw how black people are oppressed by their household, nation, and governments. This made me realize that even before, there was no humanity. Only power and money were mattered to them. The best example of how people would perceive them is how President Bush won the election by instilling dread of black males as criminals. After that, I realized how me how critical it is to think twice before acting or saying something. I will become more sen sensitive to other people's feelings and refrain from expressing anything that may have physical or mental impact on them, particularly with relation to their race. Because I do personally believe that things will be achieved if every one of us consider each other. Every person has their own story to tell, and the worst part of it is the problem be between his or her race and family. My stand is to place a strong emphasis on resolving a problem that has the opportunity to make a positive impact on society. By doing so, we may achieve a lot more goals, become more united, reduce misunderstanding, and most importantly, develop positive relationship with one another. Furthermore, no one should be treated unequally because of their skin color, nationality, or physical characteristics. Respect is a gift from God, and it cannot be earned. Regardless of who we are or where we came from, we are all human who deserve to be treated with the same level of respect. It is terrifying to consider, as a, as a student and as a member of this generation's youth, that we have prejudices against people based on their ethnicity. Persons who are aware of racism are less likely to harbor attitude against people of various cultures, colors, and races. This will result from maintaining a level of fairness in society. Being aware of it is the first step toward change, and participating in it means saving someone's life. Changes is inevitable but so is one's perspective on it.
What do you think? What do you think is the impact of the film towards aspects of culture and beliefs? What's the film and stand your point?